I feel like I'm a color commentator on TV or something. You can see the uh, the wonderful climate map that Ma just made. That's some fantastic work. We've seen some really great mapping coming out of that corner uh, lately. And how you feel, Steve? Oh yeah, sure it is. A lot of these continents are just sort of beautifully shaped and the owl breaking up was a great touch. YouTube, welcome. We have on stream with us today, Lucy, and we're about to do some cartography. We've got some, we've been doing a lot of world building lately and and we feel the need for maps. So let's, let's make some maps, shall we? I'm going to go over onto the side and what, well, Lucy, we can see your, we can see part of Lucy's desktop and then we can see part of mine where I have some phonological inventories um, arranged so that we can make place names. So would you like to walk us through what we're doing today, Lucy? Sure. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to essentially live draw uh, our map. I've got some thoughts of some visuals. This is the lovely, it's the lovely mock-up uh, made by, who made this, Colin? Maj made this. I don't know if you're in the Thank chat, you, Maj, Maj, but uh, we doff our hats to you. Yeah, so thank you for this map. I'm going to be making good use of it. Um, and yeah, so Colin and I were having a think about what kind of what, what kind of maps we would like. Um, I'm not going to be drawing some of the more technical climate style maps or anything. This is just going to be the nice little area, maybe some trees, you know, something fun. Um, we were looking at some quite old maps. Um, such as this one, if it comes up on the stream. Indeed it does. There you go. Yes, come on. When, when was this map from? So this is a, a 17th century map. Um, this is by the, the great Mercator of the projection's name. Um, this is a map of Livonia. So you can uh, place that in the sort of eastern half of the Baltic um, in present day terms. Do you want to zoom in a little bit, Lucy, so we can see some of the detail on there? One thing that's uh, lovely about older maps is that they never felt any shame in just randomly breaking a word, you know, L-I, enter, Vonia. And sometimes it's actually hard to find where the rest of the word is. Like, look at some of these. You see at the top left there, you have Suetiai Pars, so part of Sweden. Um, but you have sue and then a large gap and then ti and then a large gap and then pars and i just love that so we may take inspiration from that in our design i have some elements of um this is some uh, this is this next bit is what i did earlier <laughs> but uh, i'll be drawing most of it uh on stream did some grid work because i don't think anyone wants to see me measure pixels yeah, we have a little bit of that TV cooking show, you know, and here's a, here's one I made earlier, but uh, mostly it'll just be, it'll be live. So, okay, so shall we get started? Sure, oh, um, while you talk and discuss, I'm going to mute myself, so let me know if you need me. All no, right. I'll unmute. Okay. Bye. <laughs> we will talk to you later, Lucy. So we are using an equirectangular projection here. Um, to simplify things. This is our, we have, uh, oh, I feel like I'm a color commentator on TV or something. You can see the uh, the wonderful climate map that Ma just made. That's a fan, that's some fantastic work. We've seen some some really great mapping coming out of that corner uh, lately. And uh, I don't know what you uh, how you feel, Steve, but I think this is uh, some, some fantastic cartography. Oh yeah, sure it is. You know, the other thing that I was gonna say is that a lot of these continents are just sort of beautifully shaped and you're seeing some uh, some really some really innovative stuff. The owl breaking up was a great touch, you know. And I think the other and you could go on like that, but I probably won't, uh, unless. Yeah. So, essentially, what we have here, we have to make the outlines of the landforms to serve as the basis. This is, as Lucy said, not going to be the um, not going to be a, a truly scientific map. This is going to be more like an in-world map. Um, and in our world-building discussion, I don't know if we mentioned this uh, on stream recently, but the the sort of year zero, the present day in this world um, is is roughly equivalent in technology level to the 18th century on our world. 
And the thinking behind this is there are, I think, too many uh, medieval world building projects that certainly I've done in the past. So I wanted to, to explore a, a different time period um, and also not have to think too much about industrialization and, and things like that. So we fixed uh, the date, the rough technology level as at 18th century. Um, and then we go back from there. So we can play around in different parts of history. I'm thinking that this map, given that it's a, a 17th century map, this would be a map uh, just depicting 100 years before the present, uh, made by some of the cartographers of, of perhaps one of our little, one of our little world, in-world uh, empires or cultures or what have you. So, so that's the the thought. Um, I think we we have uh, we have some climate zones mapped out. Uh, the climate zones are still somewhat uh, under discussion, but as a starting point, we've um, we've been making some mood boards. I'm going to show those. But you have in the uh, the area that Lucy's drawing right now, you have some of the the more northerly. In more northerly climate zones, we have a boreal zone. I don't know if you can see, it's so small. It's so small. Okay, that's a bit better. So here's our boreal mood board. We also have beautiful areas of Mediterranean coastline in the uh, south, southwestern uh, corner of the continent that Lucy just scrolled away from. No, don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. And then we have the oceanic climate, which you can see is, well, it's a bit dark now, but it's the, the bright green area that I'm circling with my mouse here. And that is the famed Eustamia. So one thing as we're going about this is we're going to be coming up with some place names because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of saying continent A, continent B, et cetera. So I think we need to come up with some, some names for things. And we have a little document here. There we go. So we've been collecting some place name ideas. Um, but because these are going to be in-world place names, we need, we need them to be in a, a language that we've made. So I was thinking we could have, we could use our, sort of figure out which languages we're going to use for the place names on this map at least. For different parts of the world. So I think given that um, Eustamia, the language, Eustamia Kal, is um, something of a classical language for the sort of northeastern part of the map, we could use it for for naming things. We could use Lenadilif as well um, for the areas in, and I'll show it to you when we we zoom out a little bit, um, but the the areas in which Lenadilif was speak, spoken. So we have these two languages. I think we should use Birai for the place names in the desert region of the southwestern continent, and I think we should use some combination of uh, the different Sakrat languages for the place names in the Sakrata verse. So Kranslor, we know. Quak, we know, and Sasyut. So I think these are going to be our, our primary naming languages um, for the different regions. And these will be, <laughs> these will be, okay, yeah, we got to get some Quat names in there as well. That's true. Quat. And these will be the languages we'll work with. So I've prepared for us some inventories so that we can make up place names. Uh, I've got the Birai inventory here, I've got the Proto-Sakrat inventory here, and then we'll be able to derive the, the daughter languages from that. I've got Eustamia's inventory here, and I've got Lenadilif's inventory here. So if at any point you would like to see any of these inventories, just write so in the chat, and I will, um, I will show them. So Let's check in with Lucy, see how it's going over there. Lucy, how's everything going? Hello. <laughs> um, so I'm just drawing, I'm just drawing the land masses. So there will be a, an effect reveal shortly. Um, but I'm just 
going over the edges to make sure they're nice and smooth. Um, so I will try and be as quick as possible. <laughs> I've got the other half to do. So I think what we need to do is, um, is name these continents. And let's start from our, our top, our, our very topmost, the, uh, the continent that Lucy's just drawing the islands off of the coast of now. And there was a suggestion. Now, where was the suggestion? Northern B, far away. I like this, this idea that we ha use Eustamia maybe for, uh, as the language that we name this northern continent in, and we, we give it a name like distant or far away. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who's, uh, whose idea that was. So if that was yours, jump in and, and uh, take claim. So let's look at our, and unfortunately I don't have the screen real estate to do this now, but um, I'm going to look in our Eustamia lexicon and I'm going to see if we have a word for distant or far away. And it does not look like we do, which means that we get to create it. So let's get, um, let's get Lexergy open and let's get, and apologies, I can't see the chat while I'm doing this because uh, I only have two monitors. Let's get a nice protocol root and let me, let me put up the protocol inventory as well, because I think that will be of interest to you. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Sharraka, sharraka, and so on. I can never find anything in this document. Okay, here we go. So the phonology of protocol. As I do this, I wonder, do you think they teach courses on how to get that sports announcer patter? I would really like to take one of those courses. I think it would be a really good, a really good thing to learn. Check, check out that inventory, Steve. That is some fantastic. Look at these labials. You know, we haven't seen that since 1987 when, uh, and then you could go on, which you see, that's what you'd learn in the course. You'd learn to go on. You'd learn all of these sticks. You'd learn everything. Colin, I don't think you need a course. Out there. No, I, I need a course. Good as you are. No, no, no. I, I, I rec You know what? I you, recognize. You can teach the course. No. <laughs> Here's why, because I'm on the foothills of this mountain, and you know maybe it looks like I'm looking down to the plains, but I know that I'm looking up to the peak of that mountain. That's called humility. I suppose there's always room to grow. There certainly is, Steve. Like, who's the Steve? Uh, okay. So I'm going to look up some of this, some of the stuff from the chat because I've been neglecting the chat. Chat, my apologies. I have more windows than normal today. Um, I love this Lequari as an idea for the, uh, for the name for distant, the root for distant. Let's see uh, what that looks like in Eustamia. Poor Eustamia. Doesn't get as much uh, play as Leonard Ilef these days. Because, you know, Leonard Ilef is just so crazy. God bless it. Okay, so then Laquari turns into, oh, did I miss? Because there's no R, is there? Yeah, we don't have an R. So I think we may have to do something like Laquali, and then we have Lirali, or Lirali, Lirali, initial stress, Lirali. So how will we write that? That would be, L-I-X-A-L-I. -I. We don't have our writing system sorted out, so let's just use a Latin alphabet for uh, for this map. Um, and then one day, you didn't think we'd stop um, stop short of writing systems, did you? No. All right, let's get back to the chat. Oh yeah, Elijah, that, that quantum does. Let's use that for something. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't because we need. Um, it's CV, it's strict CV, so we need quanatum, quanatuma. And then we get kanidim. And I don't know why I'm writing these all in caps. It just looks cool. Back to the chat. Ooh, we're getting some good echo. Thank you. Mikwana. Everyone loves these labialized feelers. And you know, what's not to like? Mikna. Ooh, I think we need to check in with Lucy. 
Lucy, you're back on another continent. What is going on down there? <laughs> Am I off screen? Let me, let me, uh, there we go. Can everyone see? Yep, you're good. Excellent. Yes. Are you working on naming, uh, naming stuff on the other continent? Yes. Now we're coming up with some names on the other continent. There's also actually some names that ship has contributed from the, uh, the pre-call peoples. So that's something we can talk about uh, at some point. Uh, essentially, Definitely. we have, because the, that continent, uh, and forgive me for blanking on the names of my own poorly named uh, continents. Let me just get up the wiki and let's take a look at the geography. We have continent E. Yeah, so continent E, which is the, the sort of northeast continent, continent is, um, is the homeland of the call languages and but that that's not the only language family spoken on on that continent there were actually several families spoken before uh, the expansion of the call peoples and um and these languages form a lot of the substrate that the the place names uh, for these languages come from uh, although adapted continent e thank you ship yeah so continent e we need to uh we need to figure out what we're going to call that. And I'm very happy to call it something that doesn't have a meaning now. Just call it a cool name and then we can work out some meaning based on a myth or something like that. Because when you think about how, um, how say, Europe gets its name, it's, uh, it's an entirely mythical affair. Okay, so Mulla Talania from Echo. Coming in with some very, very strong names here. Let's put it through the sound changes and see what happens. Mulla, Talania. Oh, that's a problem with my rules, not a problem with the uh, the form. I think what we would get Mil and Tilani. So Mil, Tilani. And where is the chat? Can okay. So Max is asking. Can we list some proto call roots that uh, could be used for place names? How much do and how much do we know about the phonology of the pre-call languages? We actually have a decent amount of information here. So let me put up some some information about the call the proto call lexicon. We have a nice little spreadsheet with just that information in it. So here it is. I'm gonna I'll just scroll very slowly through it so you can see what we're we're dealing with here. The weird kid uh, has a, oh, Kenilu, that we can definitely use that. I'm going to just very slowly go through here. If you see anything, maybe screenshot it or um, or write it down. Do we have a word for owl in Sakrat? That's a good question. All right, I've got a lot to, uh, I got a lot to, to do here. Lucy, it ain't easy being a presenter. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I hear it's a hard job. I'm glad I'm on the drawing side. Uh, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and good luck with all that. Okay, so we're almost through with the protocol. And we also have some random stuff at the bottom that I have not alphabetized. Pukwakwa, chicken. Interesting. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, and then I'm going to look at the pre-call languages so essentially we'll wait I'll, I'll save this question to when lucy's looking back at that other uh, continent again but we have a few different language families at play when, when we're talking about pre-call we have at least three language families that that count depending on what part of the continent and i'm going to open up the sakrat and look to see if we have something to do with owls we don't we don't have a word for owl I think we need a word, a root for owl in Proto Sakrat. So I'm going to get the inventory out for Proto Sakrat. Here we go. So we remember the the deal with Proto Sakrat. Um, you know, we, I'm sure we all remember. No, uh, what it is is we have a, a minor syllable and then a major syllable. The minor syllable can be uh, consonant and then any one of these vowels, a, i, u, and then the major syllable can be a consonant followed by um, ra, la, ya, wa, 
and then a vowel and another consonant. And here are the here are the consonants in question. So we need a, a word for owl. Nightly songbird. Okay. Let's let's do it. So we do we have a word for night? Okay, we don't even have a word for night. So I'm gonna take some of the roots that are coming in here and I am going to T Tamwik Pakwir. Let's make one of these uh the word for night. Maybe tekrat. Tekrat can be the word for night. And then we have a word for a songbird. Let's find it. Titip. So we will need to go back to Lexergy. We're gonna need to go I'm gonna open up another ne Lexergy tab because we're gonna we're gonna use this a lot. So in our Hmm, what language should we derive it into? We could derive it into, say, Kranzlor. That would be fun. Let's do that. Where is sound changes? There we go. Oh, yeah. Kranzlor is a, a very weird language. So let's take this into Lexergy and let's do Tekrat Titip and see what we get. Tratip. So in Kranzlor, um, night bird, actually, sorry, the modifier order is the, is the other way around. Titip tekrat. So it would be tiptrat in Kranzlor. That's kind of cool. Night phoenix. Huh. That could work. So instead of titip, it would be setra tekrat. Strat. Stra. Strahtrat. Strahtrat. That's cool. And the question Does tekrat share a common root with sakrat? Maybe in pre sakrat, pre proto sakrat, it does. We'll have to, we'll have to leave that to the, uh, the in world linguist for now, though, I think, because. Because that's a very intriguing suggestion. Sakrat, by the way, is the word that we use for the the uh, language family, and it means a sailor or a rider. Um, and I, I I believe that in some varieties it may turn into a word for just a person. We need <laughs> we need some mythological names. Well, we have Duan Tarun, that's for sure. Uh, Elijah, yes, Kranzlor speakers were the ones who met Lenadilev speakers in the great. Cultural exchange, we'll, we'll, we'll call it that. I, I'm not quite sure exactly what happened yet. We've been, uh, we've been discussing it in the Discord, but uh, there are several theories. Lucy has taken up a new method of coloring in. Lucy, what is going on? What is this innovation? Is this, is this a new technique that you've brought back from abroad? What's going on? I enlarged the brush. <laughs> Now, is that something that you, you're going to be seeing more and more these days? Yeah, frequently changing brush sizes, very common. Uh, and it's this sort of thing that makes the pros the pros. Yeah, really high level techniques, uh, changing the size of things. Now, if you were to put a percentage on it, Lucy, what would you say our um, degree of completion is in this first and riveting stage of the map creation i think i'm about 90 percent done so if you give me another couple of minutes if i zoom out i've just got to go around that edge and i can reveal the next layer section the tarunian exchange i love it oh yes you're right it should be citra citra will that make a difference how did citra get get by us. I swear, if I could remember my own phonology, I would be unstoppable. <laughs> and and maybe krat, the root krat, is potentially related to kwat. Oh. I, I gotta write this down. I gotta write this down. Okay, so... What? I don't know what's going on with this style. Wait, I learned this. Control... No. Control U. No, control shift U. Control-Alt-U, what was it? 
I was told this and I've forgotten what it was. Okay, well, I've forgotten. But there is a way of, of resetting the style that I, I don't remember. Okay, there we go. Just click normal text. So, proto sacrat quat, all focusing on this krat morpheme. It's so tantalizing. Ah, Hosamulus, thank you, Hirung. That's beautiful. Let's put that in. So as you can see, we're very we're very focused today. Everything is just sort of whatever occurs to us. Hirung. And you know what I'm kind of curious about? Our our night phoenix. Strahtrat. What will that sound like in me? Let's find out. Uh where are my me sound changes? Here they are. And I apologize for doing things off screen. Sitra tikrat. Right, that also will have to change. So sitra tikrat in me. This is sha cha. Brilliant. To open up our, our large assortment of oh my goodness, this is too many. Sha cha. And I think there may even be some tone sandy that will mess with that. I forget how the tone sandy works in me. Whoa, I'm just looking at this map all of a sudden. I was I was so focused on all these sound changes that I hadn't seen Hi Lucy. I hadn't seen what what has happened. So are we there? Do we have the the full map outlined? The coastline is done. Yes. Um I will say in my defense of not using the fill tool. I know of the existence of the fill tool, I promise. Um sometimes when you fill it in there's always a little pixel gap and I'd rather make sure it's all nice and clean and do it all by hand than have to look for the pixel gap. So in my defense, I do know what the fill tool is. So don't worry. Okay. Um, however, kind of ready for a bit of a reveal here. Um, am I in frame? It looks like I'm You're in totally frame. You're totally in frame. Perfect. So we remove the old map. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was that noise? That was a drum roll. Um, oh, I see, I see. Okay, fine. Um, and then we add something here. We've got a frame. I think you need to zoom out a little bit to get the full thing in. Pen left? Yeah. Here we go. So, uh, it's the screen. If you zoom out a little me. tiny bit, you'll get the whole thing. I can't because it won't let me move to the left due to Photoshop being Photoshop. Ah. Uh. Modern, we're fine. We're fine. Modern tools of uh, technology no, and right? uh, such such things. All right, but look at this. This is beautiful. I have a couple more layers to reveal. So we have a nice little texture here, little map texture, and then bam, here we go. We've got what? our little world. What just happened? Look at this. This is the some bits I made earlier. That's the, that's the reveal here. Look at this. This is beautiful. How did you do this, Lucy? Um, they're just layers in Photoshop. Um, Don't sell so... yourself short. This is some fantastic work. I haven't seen this kind of work since since 1974 when Dave Morganson uh, made a, a drawing on my parents' garage. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure Photoshop existed in 1974. So uh, yeah. That's what makes this so amazing. Thank you. I tried to um, make the edges, I could probably go over it a bit more actually, but I tried to make the edges look a bit more natural and less sort of angular as well. Well, I think it's a thing yeah, it of at... beauty. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, well, so I have a little, come on, shot. There we go. The C. And the um, you guys can't see my layers actually, but... Um, yeah, this is just the blue of the sea for now. Um, we can go into more detail there later, but that's just sort of nice and bluey like that, uh, the inspo map. Um, and yeah, and I think we can do things like add, you know, some trees, some rivers, and sort of slightly ad libs a liver, uh, liver? <laughs> a river there. But up to, up to everyone, uh, let me know what you would like to add. 
So I think what we'll do, Lucy, is we'll put a cut in here because my editor doesn't like when these segments get too long. Oh, oh your editor? Yeah, um, yeah. I hear, she's, I hear she's great. I hear she's great. Yeah, you know, she's fine. She does the job sometimes. All right, so I'm going to put in a cut for YouTube here. Uh, Lucy, say goodbye to the lovely people of YouTube in the future. Bye, future YouTube. And we will see you next time.